Ah, oh, goodness gracious. Uh, I want to say a very, very special welcome to Brad Christie. Um, Brad, as most of you know, is the, well, let's, let's do his introduction. That will explain Brad. Uh, Brad hails from a place called uh, Novato, California, I believe it is. Yes. Which if you don't know California, that's somewhere between Petaluma and San Francisco, about the halfway point between the two of those. And if you don't know where those are, it's on the west side of the state, somewhere in the middle of California. Uh, <laughs> Brad is, is yeah, you know, about half an hour north of San Francisco. Yeah. Brad is the owner, designer, manager, programmer, chief cook, and bottle washer for all things Taminations. Um, and uh, it's today Taminations has become one of, if not the most popular square dance collar choreographic computer tools in the world for both dancers and more importantly, for, for, uh, for callers, but more importantly for dancers as well as a teaching and a guide tool. And it contains a lot of tools which allow viewers to watch the animations of an individual call, often from a variety of formations, which we've been looking at just in the pre-chat. It provides an excellent education tool to assist dancers and callers in understanding the actions of calls and the flows. It covers the call for programs from basic right up through C3B. Yes. C3B. And it's also for callers, it's a programmable sequencer it is, is the feature that I'd say relatively recent, but I think that's 2006, seven? Yeah, you probably. Put that, uh, for use by callers as a checker and also in the development of their choreography. And I could go on about Taminations, but I won't. Uh, I Every time we get Brad here, Brad gets inundated for the next three weeks with questions about how to use. So I'm going to turn it over. Brad, thank you very much for taking the time and coming to see us today. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks, Mel. Um, you know, I, I get questions all the time. And uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, okay, so now you should all be seeing um, uh, Taminations. I'm going to go back to the main screen here. And uh, let's tell you on, on the on the main screen. Uh, let's see. I think this points to my uh, uh, website. But if you go to the sequencer at the bottom, here's the feedback button. And if you click the feedback, I think that brings up a uh, email. Um, right. Okay. I'm gonna... I don't think you've got your screen shared there, Brett, or do you? Okay. Oh yeah, there it is. Never mind. That was mine. My my screen, not yours. Okay. Um, yeah. So so feel free to to email me uh, any questions or comments or uh, anything you want. Now, um, while I'm at the main screen here, I will point out that uh, quite recently, within the past month or so, uh, besides the website and the apps for the Android and Apple. We now have uh, application programs for both Windows and the Mac program, and, and these work quite well. Um, you'll find that they they are they're they're faster, and they're they're less susceptible to glitches that um, sometimes happen depending on which browser you're using if you're on the website. So I'd I'd really recommend that if if you haven't uh, uh, done it yet, go ahead and take a look. At the uh, at the Windows program or, or the Mac, if you're a, a Mac person, just go to the Windows Store and um, look for Taminations or Square Dance, and you're gonna download it just like you download the app on the iPhone. So now go over to the sequencer, since um, since this is a, a, a color uh, color group here, I've got to concentrate. Uh, this just just on the sequencer. Recently, I've uh, added a lot more documentation here, and this is sort of a, an outline, which is, would work well for our presentation as well. Uh, all the different features um, of the sequencer. So we'll start with entering calls here. Or the basic operation is is uh, quite simple. You just Type of column that does it, you know, it's three, four, and there we go. You can uh, 
enter some calls on uh, together on one line. We'll go back and like see. Uh, um, That's touch a quarter, walk, and dodge. And because it started the, the um, started with the heads, uh, Tamination knows we'll, we'll keep the uh, the context, keep that context for the rest of the calls. So so implicitly, this is the same as entering heads, touch a quarter, and then on the next line, heads, walk, and dodge. That was just a little a shortcut which is similar to how he would call it. He, he would say, um, or often he heads touch a quarter and walk in Dutch. And that's what the, uh, you would expect the dancers to do. If you want the calls to be independent of each other and type them on one line, you could do that by uh, separating them in semicolons, like heads, lead right, uh, Veer left. So now veer left is going to apply to everybody. As lead right, and now everybody veers left. Oh. If I, yeah, if I entered, uh, it's not going to like that because it thinks it, it wants you the the original heads to to then veer left. And that's going to, not going to work for the for the, just the centers because um, they're they're back back to back dancers can't do a veer. But the semicolon is just a shortcut for entering two calls on two different lines. And uh, we'll, later we'll see uh, how that might be actually uh, quite useful. So we'll look at the, um, the settings here. Uh, you can change the, uh, the starting formation. Sometimes uh, if you're going through you know, various exercises like different ways to do Calls from lines. It might be easier to start from lines. Most all of the uh, call informations are here. That's your speed, grid, or passes. Some of these are the same. Recently, I've added a setting for axes. This was this is in uh, response to some suggestions by other callers. Uh, some teaching methods I know um, are. Uh, uh, Look at dancers crossing various axes uh, to distinguish, uh, to separate different types of calls, you know, whether uh, a dancer crosses an axis or, or how many dancers cross axes. And if you use one of those teaching methods, well, now this is a setting that might be useful for that. I use the grid all the time in programming because I need to know the exact distances between dancers to get the movements down. But unless you're real um, geometrically oriented, you might not want that. Dancer colors, I'm sure you've um, uh, seen that. Again, this can be very useful for, for teaching or illustrating uh, these for your dancers, you know, in, uh, you can take uh, these are the four red, green, blue, yellow correspond to the four couples here. So if I want couple number two to be uh, uh, orange instead, there it is. And you can focus on just one couple by setting all the others gray. And, and if, if you're using a, a calling method that focuses on one couple and where they are, then this, this can be useful for, uh, uh, for using those. And it can be sort of a nuisance then to set them back. So let me show you something here. We, let's have a, this one blue. And this one's like yellow. Yellow and these a bit green. Okay, so now they're back to the default. <clears throat> if you go over to the abbreviations, here's where that semicolon can be useful. 
well, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. Let's go back. Let's go back to the settings here. You can also type in a lot of these settings, uh, like, uh, well, I'll tell you, never want to do that, but um, you can do the, the, uh, uh, the colors as well, color and couple, the number. And, and the color that you want. Going on. That's 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 your the uh, color dancer couple. That's sort of a, a nuisance to type all of that. Or it can be useful if you can go over to the abbreviations. If there's some setup that you use all the time. Like, let's say, uh, we'll call that C1, or only for, not for, for a couple one only, and we'll say that that's, uh, and to avoid a lot of typing. Okay, so that's color couple one red, color couple two gray, color couple three gray, color couple four gray. I'll send all uh, separate by um, semicolons. So now if I do C1 only, oh, there we go. Now, um, so, uh, all the uh, only color, only a couple one is colored. Can this be applied to single dancers as well? Uh, yes. Is there? Um, there it is. Dancer one green. So, so. Uh, Okay, dancer, dancer one is, is the uh, couple one boy, dancer two is the couple one girl. We go under, under settings and uh, I'll have to reset that. So the numbers will show up. Dancer numbers, here are the dancer numbers. If you were coloring the, the, uh, the dancers by number, then that's, these are the numbers you would use. Do you have Actually, a? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, do go you ahead. have a? Do you have a color option for making them just totally disappear? If I wanted three and four to totally disappear, so I could do two couples stuff, and not grayed out, but actually invisible. No, okay. but there in 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 these um, the formations that you could choose. There's one that's facing couples, and uh, choose that one for doing doing two couple setups. Yeah, I, I like to do two couples stuff with couples one and two so that I can still use heads and sides to get them to, to refer to them individually. But that's fine. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, terminations, the sequencer at, uh, so far doesn't do asymmetric anyway. So that will be a, uh, a pro another problem. Right, well, I, I'm, right. I'm going to just address a couple of things here because um, you've answered these questions already that are coming in. Is can you set the colors, the couple of colors as an example individually, and how do you set those? You've answered that one. Um, and the other one was a comment. Um, being able to set the color for one dancer is really, really good for two things. One is mental mm -hmm. image, and the other is for lady callers to track the right hand lady rather than tracking head couples and side couples. So those you've already covered those. I just want to nip those in the bud instead of getting those back at the end. So that was it. Brad, can you add the axis at the same time as you set the colors? I'm sorry. Uh, can you add the axis in that uh, complex call that sets the colors? Can you also add the axis at the same time? Oh, oh, oh as, as a... Uh, 
as a C1 only uh, entry, could you have that add the access as well? Oh, you mean as as a typed command? Yeah, as a, as a shortcut command to set everything in one go. Right. Um, not yet, but that's a good idea. Uh, I just added the uh, the setting to add the axis just like uh, a couple of weeks ago. But yeah, that's a good idea to add that as a command as well. So I'll do that. I was just thinking if you if you had something that said, for instance, your shortcut was D setup for default setup, you could have your cuppers all colored the way you want the axis on and the speed set it fast. And you could have that as just type D setup. That'll change all your settings like that. Is that kind of what you're getting to, Alan? Yeah, I was thinking if you wanted to just do mental image practice, you could say, okay, I want all the settings that are going to be suitable for practicing mental image, and I can do them one go with a, just MI or something like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So we've, we've got most of them there, but I'll add the axis as well. If there's anything else uh, that's missing, you know, just let me know. Uh, Brad? Uh, yes. So far, the axis, you only have the big axis, right? The two vertical and horizon wise, yes. but you don't have, if like for an eight chain through formation, you don't have the little axis as well. Well, you can have, you can make little or big or short or long axis. Is there something else? Wait, the, the axis in the box. Oh, you mean like on each side? for each box yeah, like yeah, no. would be interesting for things like zoom or or peel the top actions where you have individual or with like quarter in or face in yeah facing the axis the little one or the big one sometimes they're identical but sometimes you stay in your own half yeah i see what you mean that might be uh uh a little harder i mean it, it, you the, the program might have to detect which which big axis your 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 little axes. So so like you want one little axis for one box and one for for the other box. So in this right. case, you have two on the horizontal axis, you'd have two little axes. Right. Yeah, we have you all your ones. axes on. You're basically making it like a, a shotgun cross, not a shotgun, a rifle crosshair. So you'll have the long axis with the two short axes down down each right. middle point. Mm -hmm. And that could be a default setting. You're right. And here it'd have to be vertical. Yeah. So right, you just have the long, if you had the long axis on there, you could just have an insert, you know, you call it whatever box axis or, or yeah. quadrant axis. Well, that would be kind of wrong. Like, yeah, uh, that's 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 a bit more complicated, but I'll think about it. Yeah, like working on a split ver version of of uh, concentric or uh, the whole square type things. Yeah. Yeah, you could call them split axes. Okay. So let's see. Let's go back. Okay, I think we've we co we covered. Um, most everything with the settings here that we wanted to go through. So let's go back here. Okay, copy and paste. There's not much to say about that. Okay, we talked a bit about the uh, abbreviations and how you can stack a lot of uh, commands in the abbreviations. I think we know how, how that works. Okay, special calls. These these are um, uh, things that move the dancers, but really aren't real square dance calls. So if, uh, here's one example: slides past the ocean, expand, girls change. Okay, we have diamonds now. Boys face in. Well, maybe you really wanted to uh, have a quarter tag at this point. And, um, your dancers will, will, and once you say boys face in, they're likely to uh, assume a quarter tag anyway. So, the way you get this to 
uh, contaminations to fix this is using a special call called adjust to a formation. And as long as the dancers are reasonably nearby, then they'll snap to, uh, to that formation. And the next one, square the set. Now, it doesn't matter where the dancers are. This is like when, when uh, everything breaks down, they square the set, oh, everybody goes home. Okay, back away and step ahead are useful for uh, um, making other adjustments. That's so. Uh, well, well, let's go here and we'll start with the lines. Now, just past three. And. That's the step ahead is actually a call. And there we've got boxes, if uh, the C1 box is there. Uh, and back away, like I gave the example here. This is uh, uh, one thing that's tough is like to say, um, that's right and left through. The way Taminations does is, is that they stay in the center. And if you're dancing uh, typically anything beyond mainstream or advanced, this is what you expect the dancers to do. Well, if you're dancing uh, basic or maybe SSD, uh, you expect them to, to uh, back out and then the sites could do a call. Is just sort of uh, at least that's the way it is in uh, in my area. I don't know how it is in if other countries are similar. But anyways, let's say that you wanted them to get out of there so the sites could do something. And back away. Back away is not a real call that's on the list. It's just words that uh, uh, you can use. You probably can use this as a color too, if, if especially at the higher levels, if you want the uh, then the sites come in and, and do something. So there we have step ahead and back away. Slide in, out, left, and right can be useful. Uh, you want to uh, make stars. I'll just move the dancers out. Now, now we're back to like what we were before when we did the adjust a quarter tag. So, oh, I couldn't do that. We're going to just a quarter tag to get back there. Oh, that's not what I want. So, uh, better slide out to make an O or. Those are the original sites, so I'll say slides, slide in. Of course, if you're dancing C1, you would, you would say center squeeze to make your O. Okay, flip in and flip out. Those are just the same. They're like, like a run around a, a phantom run, you could say. Flip out, or we have butterfly. Yeah, these these can be useful to uh, fudge formations, especially if contaminations does something you're not expecting. Sometimes you know it doesn't get everything right. So well, 
a while. While is a magic word in uh, contaminations. Let's see. Uh, let's see, do two calls to two groups of dancers at the same time. That can be really useful in putting together some complex uh, choreography. Let's see. And let's see if this works. There we go. Hey, Brad. Yes. Can you do? Um, just, just set up a standard standard wave. Okay. Because this will answer one of the questions that came in. So what I, what we're looking at is your timing uh, protocols that you have, giving the timing at the base is something that is used very extensively by a lot of callers, but it doesn't stack concurrent timing. Does while stack that? So if you called swing through while the girls circulate, or spin well, chain through while the girls circulate twice for concurrent well, activity. Would that adjust uh, the timing? Yeah, that's not going to work because, because the first part of the call overlaps. I could do uh, like... Well, e even from a static square, for instance, heads or sides promenade halfway while the heads square through. Now that should take 12 beats of music. Let's see if this works. Well, 15, that's, uh, what did you say it should be? 12? 12. Yeah. Okay, well. So, yeah. yeah well, well, it's, it's, it's close a little more than. Uh, yeah, but, well, you know, that's, that's fine because it, now if you type those separately, what do you get? Because that's, that's adding eight, eight and 10. Roughly. Sixteen. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, because the heads have gone in on the sides promenade. Ooh, that didn't work. Oh, okay. No, yeah, that's not working because it's not, you know, it's not, um, it's, it's looking at sites promenade one half as a, as a call that, that everybody uses. So why all is it working? properly in, in that case. Uh, if we go to, uh, okay, so now we have six beats. If we do, um, well, this should, the natural only adds four beats for the, uh, for the circulate. So that's just a limitation on, on, the, on the promenade, is that when Tam sees a promenade, it thinks of, even though you say sides promenade one half, it has the, uh, the heads going in to let the sides go around the outside, the heads backing back out. So it's not smart enough to, uh, uh, for the heads to come in and square through at the same time. And Simon, you asked, uh, you put a question in a squared set convention. I don't know what that means. And you'll have to bear with me for interjecting, but um, I'm trying to get the questions in as they come up while you're presenting. Sure. Because sometimes sure. they don't make sense after the fact. Right. 
Yes, that was to do with the, if you go right and left through from a square set, the, the square set convention says you end up with. If end the up. Head, if the head back still, on. So, yeah. Go on. Are you saying you always end up like this? Yes, but that's not what Yes, that's applying the square set convention. Okay. If the heads star through, slide through. Oh. Star through yes. and slide through. No, the slide through should leave should leave them in the middle. Right. Now okay. if you do. Now, if you do the heads right and left through, the end formation will still be that two by four. That's correct. Yeah, it's a recent addition to the um, introductory paragraphs in the de in uh, I think the mainstream definitions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this, this is the case where the color lab definitions have actually caught up with the software. <laughs> okay. So oh, if you did a slide through square through three instead of a square through four, Brad, see what that would, would that answer your problem? Uh, what did you say again? What did you want me to do? Head slide through and square through three while the sides promenade. Uh, yeah. You need to no, find this. Yeah, no, that's too much for it to try to do on one slide. Okay. Could I ask a question since we were on this? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the, if, if we do heads pass through, they will end on uh, in the center, you said, right? I think so. Uh, so yeah. you have to step forward or something to get them out of the way to get the sides in. Yeah, that, that that would be heads pass through and step ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, say sides pass through from here. Where will they end? Uh, oh, well, that's a little interesting. Um, I thought so too. Right. Right. Actually, I might have that in my list of bugs, but I'll I'll go ahead. Yeah, yeah I've been through that. We were bug. discussing that on Facebook. <laughs> okay, I'll make a note, note of that just to make sure. Okay. Okay, well, let's see. Why don't we. Uh, I think the sides are just better dancers. Okay. <laughs> let's go. Um, and do we say we've covered, we've covered most of these? and the speed um i would show you something about about this with the id so we'll go back here brad, brad yes one, one, one second just just to go back with what was being asked there can you type in heads slide through and square through three heads slide through and square through, square three? through three while no no Oh wow! No, no, it's, it's I, well. You know, I, 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 this is this is one of the things that I wanted to show you what it was. So head slide right. through and square through three, while sides promenade half. Yeah, I think that's. Now, wait, because it's, it's it's an interesting anomaly that happens here. And just just leave it for a second Oops. now. Count to oh, three. Yeah. Wait, wait. Oh. <laughs> It, 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 I don't know what it is, but there's a few cases where I, that was just one that came up earlier, but there's a few cases where I've noticed that it does it. I haven't written them down, but it'll overshoot. And if you just wait two or yeah. three seconds, it, it, it adjusts back to where you want to go. It doesn't change the timing. You just adjust back to it where they should end up. It fixes that. Okay. Well, I don't know how it's doing it. Okay. Well, I'll have, I'll have more things to look at here. Okay. Uh, 
I just want to show one thing on, on more on the settings here. Uh, one, I've, I've been doing, I don't do much code. Uh, I do just a little bit. One thing that uh, I'm sure all beginner uh, callers have problems with is remembering uh, your key dancers. It's very easy to, to do it when you've got the uh, uh, dancers numbered and colored here. It's very easy to, to figure out where the where your key couple is and where the corner is and all that. But um, let's say that, okay, uh, we don't have the dancers colors and we don't have any dancers. Either. Let's say that, you know everybody's name. Well, now you can uh, go through a drill, go through a few calls and see if we can remember um, who your key couple and who your, it's like a, a little memory test or concentration. Can you, can you call and still remember? I mean, there's, you can, you can um, turn off that and maybe they're all dressed differently, but you can, you know, if, if you come up as a guest caller to a, um, a club, you don't know anybody's name, but you know, you, you can identify them visually. You could try doing something like that. So there are various uh, games you can play with the identification here. So let's go back. Uh, let's, let's point that out. Okay, so. Okay, selecting dancers. Uh, probably know how to do most all of this. Any way that you can select answers for calls, terminations will accept. Some of these are, are a little uh, more advanced, actually, literally. Let's see. Um, Okay, um, and at the advanced level, there's uh, official definitions for, for bows and bells. And you can think if, if you have a couple, a normal couple, the bows are the boys are the bows and the girls are the bells. But more specifically, the, the bows are the ones holding their partner with their right hand and the bells are holding their partner with the left hand. So now we have inverted lines. So who are the bows and who are the bells? Oh, well, the girls are the bows. The boys are the bells. So it does that. So. But that only goes if everybody is active, because otherwise in the center you as well would have one bow. Right. This this uh, depends on who your partner is. First, you identify your partner. Then you say, "Am I holding my partner with the left hand?" Then I'm a bell. If I'm holding my partner with the right hand, then I'm a bow. Like the four lady could be as well bell or bow, depending whether you have the centers or 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 uh, with um, with everybody uh, activated, like with the two girls. Yes. Regarding yeah, the girl, see. she's a bow. Regarding the center couple, she's a bell. Right. Yeah. So, so if you if you're referring just to the centers, then then they be switched. The same for yeah. the number two boy in this case. And that's that's where your basic definitions and your basic setups would need to be understood by the dancers, because unless unless you further identify a group, if you're in this kind of a setup, you're working in a split formation, unless you identify another group or a line or a specific concept. If you just said bells and bows, it's expecting the dancers to know that the girls are the bows and the boys are the bells because of the split convention. Unfortunately, that's not stressed. Uh, it's intuitive in the programming, but it's not intuitive in the dancer's head. And 
just to call it like that, that's setting up your dancers for an issue. So you're right, it is something to be aware of. Now, moving on, let's say, uh, okay. Okay, that is a good knowledge of leaders and trailers here. I don't know if you're going to argue the same thing, but I, I think it's, it's uh, so who are the leaders here? Again, same, split versus the center box. The centers could be everything. Again, if you're if you're not saying centers, if you're saying everybody, then then uh, then the girls are the leaders, and the boys are the trailers. You look at each 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 uh, tandem, each set of yeah. tandem dancers. You look at the, each box by default, right? Yeah, but that's what we callers know, but the dancers, right? Uh, if if you just said. You know, from here, leaders turn back. I'm, I mean, uh, that's not something you would you would do unless you're doing a drill on leaders and trailers. But I'm just doing it here to illustrate how Tamanations, what Tamanations oh, okay. understands. In fact, that's generally for for the whole presentation. I should uh, give a disclaimer: is that a lot of stuff that I'm doing isn't stuff you would actually call to your dancers. I'm just illustrating how Tamanations understands. Uh, what to do. Another one. <clears throat> okay, so now we have a tidal wave. Now, the convention, there, there is, if, if you look in, under the, um, the, the call out definition, if you refer to centers from a tidal wave, it's the, the centers are in each wave of four. So here the centers are the girls. The contaminations knows that. That's different from the center four. And you can select the center four, uh, swing through, uh, knows that that's uh, different from the center. So that's a, a different terminology here. So if you wanted to very centers to trade, it would be um, send the four centers trade. Uh, that, it also understands the term very centers. Okay. And also understands um, the term. And remember, we were talking. We were talking about while there's another extension to that called while others. So. So it fits within the concentric concept of the C1. You've got that in there. Well, sorry if we want to look at it that way. Now I'll talk about heads and sides. Um, Taminations has a convention is that if you're on squared set positions, heads and sides refers to the couples and the head spot and the side spot. So let's see. Uh... I'm just gonna scramble the, uh, uh, the dancers here. So now if I say heads trade, it's I'm talking about the dancers in the head spot because we're all on squared uh, set positions. But now if I say, uh, Heads. Uh, now we're no longer in squared set position. So now if I say heads, we're talking about the original heads, which are the ones on the outside. Of course, if you're calling, you wouldn't try and trick your dancers this way. You you would say those on those at the head spot or original heads, original sites, something like that. This is just the convention that Tamination uses, so you don't have to be typing things like original heads. Let's touch a quarter and spread. 
or things about couples and waves. Contaminations also uh, will identify dancers that are as a couple and dancers that are uh, in, in a wave when you're looking at sets of two dancers. So I would say like a, I don't know if you'd actually want to call anything referring to dancers like that. Uh, you could call that with the if you can, can't you? Couldn't you? Right, that would be one way of, of doing that. Or you could say, you know, uh, something like girls who are in the mini or dancers who are in the mini wave hinge, dancers who can hinge. Of course, all the dancers can hinge if they're dancing uh, advanced. If you just say hinge, well, then all the dancers will do a hinge. Okay, and uh, let's see one more. These these are all all listed this listed here in uh, uh, the documentation, which you can always uh, look up from the from the help. Okay, so now we have a sort of interesting formation here. Say you want to, to uh, talk to the wave of four. Um, that's not unusual if you're this kind of setup. You say you want the wave of four to swing through. Well, how do you tell contaminations to do that? That's uh, the center wave of four is the, mat, is the incantation which will uh, let you do that. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's see. Oh, it did that. There we go. And okay, I'm not going to try and resolve that or anything. Okay, that's all everything about selecting dancers. I'll go back and talk about. So modifications, which is something we've added uh, 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 pretty recently. Is now a lot of calls, you, you know, many calls have parts and you could divide the parts up. At the, C, at the challenge levels, it's very common to divide calls up into parts and play around with uh, doing things with uh, different parts. At the lower levels, it could be uh, uh, sort of fun to workshop. And, and really help your dancers understand the different parts that you know, the calls have different parts. I'll play around a little bit with, uh, with the call remake. You know, is is uh, hinged by the right, trade by the trade by the left, and then cast off three quarters by the right. So three parts to uh, to remake. My first thing we'll do is uh, do you could do do one specific part of three. So that's that. Finish does everything except the first part. So that's trade by the left cast by the uh, right. I think we first order that's, oh, that's way up at C3B. But again, this is something that you can play around with. Uh, um, like you have, uh, if, if you're teaching swing through, and you think the dancers really understand swing through? Well, you could try the uh, reverse order swing through. That's straight by the left, straight by the right. Well, that's sort of like left swing through, I guess. Reverse order left swing through. Okay. 
that's just dirty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that was good enough. Anyway, okay. Uh, what else do we have here? We may skip the second part. Well, that's hinge and then cast off three quarters all by the way. Well, that call went nowhere. Uh, one thing that's sort of uh, You know, load the boat. Uh, you know, so what would it look like if we were skip the second part of load the boat? Can we do that? Setters will pass through, but it's def ACF, then they just trade and they pass through again. And the outsides, well, they'll pass two people in turn instead of passing three people in turn. So that works well nicely. And there's other things you could do here, replace, interrupt. Like, uh, we'll go back to remake here. Oops. Interrupt between each part of the split circle. So if you have hinge, split circulate, Trade by left, split circulate, and finally cast off three quarters. So there's a lot of things you can do with uh, with these calls with parts now. Okay, and uh, will that will that actually work? Not so much an interrupt, but the with the boolean but at the basic and mainstream level, we're looking at square through, but on the third hand swing through, or, you know, left swing through or square through, but on, or right, left grand, but on the third hand turn through. Um, okay. Are, um, are those programmed in there? Uh, not very much, not right and left grand. Uh, on, on square through, there is a comment. It's, it's not, it's not, it doesn't use the but, but it uses on the third hand. That's a special code for square through. On the third hand, swing through. Uh, oh, well, let's try this. There we go. Okay, two and the third hand, swing through. I don't use but on, on there. That's that's special for square through. Uh, most of the applications for but um, start at the uh, advanced level. Yeah, no, I was just looking at it because this is one of the things when you're using the interjection of but as a replacement, that's mm -hmm. interrupting a call at a specific point, which is square through but on the third hand, et cetera. Um, those are some of the ones that are commonly used at basic and mainstream, but the application intamination for the caller is different because it's specialized to that. Is that just to differentiate between the advanced application or just for ease of programming? Right. Now, um, square through is, is the, the square through on the, on the nth hand is special because, uh, it, the the formation is sort of ambiguous in, in that it's it, we'll go over to the uh, the definition here. Oh, okay. Um, Extended application on the third or of square an extended applications on the third or other hand where the pull by action blends into the following call. So so you're really not replacing replacing um, you're just 
you're, you're just stopping the action at a specific point on the square through and then sticking in another call. And that, that is essentially what the butt does at the higher level. Ooh. Right, well, let me go over here and have one example here. Uh, chain reaction, but nothing, then normally the boys would finish with the cast, cast three quarters. Now they're doing uh, nothing instead while the other dancers finish the call. Right. Okay, so so that's uh, how Taminations uses uses but as a special uh, modifier for calls with parts that have a specific application for the but call. Like I said, it's it's, it's not used much or at all at um, at uh, mainstream or plus. And square uh, through us, yeah. Go what ahead. about what about um, load the boat, uh, but the centers stop in a wave? Oh, uh, I don't. Oh, that is. I think Larry had written in there square through three to a wave. Right. Okay. I have centers to a wave is a special modification. It's not related to but. Okay. In, instead, what Taminations does is if it can uh, uh, calculate. Uh, backing up the centers from their final position. And if they'd be a wave, then it will go ahead and do that. To a wave is really an advanced level call, that isn't it? Yeah. Right. Because because uh, of, because the uh, centers to the wave was added, it labeled the call as C1 mm. instead of plus. Okay. Uh, let's see. We, uh, oh yeah, I'll turn the star. Uh, that's something that's used a lot at uh, even at the lower levels. Uh, how much should I turn the star? Let's say a full chart. Okay. It understands what calls with parts have stars. And I'll trust that that was a full turn there. Yeah. So you can do things like that with, with any call that has stars now. There's a question okay. here on stars. How do you, <clears throat> I got that right? How do you call make a right hand star, head star left? I'm assuming what they mean is head square through, make a right hand star, head star left, back to the same two or star left halfway. How do you program that in Taminations? Yeah, Taminations doesn't do that very well at all. I've worked a little bit on that. Um, I have some ideas, but yeah, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, that really doesn't work well at all in Taminations. It's, it's the stars is like you use them, especially in singing calls. So we'll put that in there, not there yet. Yeah. Yeah, I have some ideas, but um, I don't think I've uh, actually programmed them yet. Okay, then the, the, uh, a few other ways. Uh, these have been in here for a while. Those who can have some simple, it, it, you can do some simple cases with that. Nothing too complicated though. And like, and you call that has an even number of parts, you can do half or one 
half, if that makes sense. Ooh, that came off a little, a little odd. We've adjusted the diamonds. There we go. Okay. Well, I've yammered on for an hour now. I think that, and that's uh, everything that I, that I want to talk about. You just, uh, um, well, at first, Indeed. I want to say thank you very much, Brad. You've given us a, okay. a line at the outline and foundation. There's a couple of things that I've, I've been interjecting the questions as we go along. There's a couple more here. Um, yeah, yeah. One, of the big, one of the big comments was, um, thanks for the help menu. It's really good to look at that uh, to find these commands. It's got a nice index, right. which is linked rather than having to go and say, look in the paperwork contact. The other one is... Um, how do you switch between Taminations and the command examples? And I'm assuming what they mean is the definitions. If you open up Tamination Sequencer, which a lot do, they go there to the command examples. How are you switching back and forth between those screens? Um, oh, do you mean the different screens here on the right side? Yeah, it's like if I was, uh, well, you, you the one that we had there was square through, but when you went back to the definition, Oh, oh, oh. Um, in other no, words, in, in, yeah, in the Taminations itself, not the sequencer, but you're flipping back and forth between that on a toggle. That, I guess that wasn't caught. Yeah, well, I, yeah, to, to look at the, like, the definition of square three, yeah, I, I just left the sequencer. Uh, you know, it's the, the arrow on the top, go back to the main screen and then go, you know, looking at the, uh, the definition for square through. And I think, I think one of the things that happened in the software update that you had a few years ago, you open up Taminations and Sequencer is a choice, as opposed to a lot of people that just have Tamination Sequencer as a hot link. So if you've oh. only got the Sequencer opened up. Um, yeah, if you're running the website, you can make a link to go straight to the Sequencer, just like you can you can, you can, uh, you, that's what they call deep linking. You can yeah. also uh, have a deep link if, if you want to look at a specific animation. Uh, you can uh, deep link to that. And that can be useful, like if, if you're building um, a website for your class and you want to have links to the specific calls you're teaching that week, then you can do something like that. I, right here, I'm not running the website. I'm, running the Windows program. So I don't have a, uh, a way of going to uh, directly open up the sequence. But yeah, for, for, the main, for the main screen here, here I'll even go up to the, the start. And of course, just hit the sequencer button down here and the, and the near the bottom of the menu. And now if, if yeah, if your link is now um, taminations.org, taminations, forward slash something like that. Um, that'll take you online to the page that Brad is showing with the definitions and the sequencer as a, as a button at the bottom, as opposed to, as you say, a deep link to the sequencer only. Which brings us right. to the next question, which brings to the next question, does the offline version work without the internet? Yes. If that's one of the main points of, of having. Yeah. And uh, I think the last question I have here is from Don. Should I ask chat questions or directly to Brad? By all means, directly to Brad. Oh, oh, oh yeah, we're open to, yeah. Yeah, we're open for discussion now. I, I... So just before you get to your question, Don, I want to say thank you very much for coming in, Brad. And I definitely do want to have you back. I, I'm assuming there are a number of questions on how do I do this? How do I do that? I would personally like to say I have sent Brad, I think, probably about half a dozen emails asking questions a couple of times. Oh, hadn't thought about that from there or, oh, I didn't realize that wasn't working. And it was usually fixed by the end of the day or by the end of the week, depending on how complex the thing is. Very responsive, very good. And if there is something like uh, what Mickey was saying with the minor accesses, it may not happen eventually, but I don't think you ever left a question unanswered, even if that answer is no, I can't do it. Uh, right. And I know Brad does not like niggling things. This question about how do I do a right hand star, left hand star, 
has been tormenting in the back of your mind for many years. And I know it's still going and it'll, it'll get there eventually. I know you will. <laughs> right. So. The tough thing is the, you know, what makes it difficult is, is the, the ending of it is if you're looking on, under the definition, I think that, well, it, since we stopped the screen up here, uh, the definition says you, you end at uh, each dancer knows his position on the floor by how far the star stern is just his facing direction as appropriate for the next next call. Well, that's something I, I really can't program very well. It's uh same as directional arm turns as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that said, Brad, thank you very much for coming in and uh, thank you to everybody. Uh, Brad, can you just show everybody how to get your email? If you just go back, show them where that is in Taminations. So if you do have questions, you can send them yes. directly to Brad. Yeah, on the sequencer, go to the, um, when you bring up the sequencer and you go grant the help page at the bottom of it, it says, I'm, you know, I'm working on this continuously and just click the feedback button and that'll take you right to your email. So uh, thank you very much. Let's have a big hand for Brad and open it up for questions. Don Beck is first because he's been waiting patiently. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Brad, first of all, I want to thank you so much for, for having this thing available, this tool available to us. Um, it is, it's really wonderful. And uh, as many of you know, I've been teaching mental image courses online, and I could not do it without um, without Taminations. It's, it's really been a great tool for me and for those watching. Um, I was taking notes like mad while you were doing. I've got 10 notes here. Five, oh, okay. of, them, five of them are aha, so, aso moments and things that I now know I can do, but five of them are questions. Okay. Um, the start, the first one, I just recently downloaded the Mac version of Taminations. And yes. yes it, Yes, it works much nicer, much smoother, especially when I'm recording a Zoom se Zoom session. The dancers just that removing that extra step. Um, I'm figuring that when you make improvements, that if I'm using Taminations on a browser, I get those improvements instantly. Will mm -hmm. you be updating the Mac and Windows versions? pretty much in sync with that or do i have to check every once in a while well yes when i do a new version and um uh, recently i've been as it's usually like once every uh, couple weeks or so uh i update all the version all the different platforms at the same time that's the uh, the web uh the apps for uh the iphone and android and now the programs for uh, the Windows and the Mac. Uh, they all get updated at the same time. They all use the same code. Uh, and I believe that the Mac will update your program automatically like it does all other updates on the Mac. Um, I've got mine set to, are you, I can't remember, you're going through the App Store? Yes. Okay, they will notify me when there are upgrades. Um, I don't have it do it automatically. I like to look at them, but at least they'll notify me. So that's cool. Um, right, next... right. For what, you know, for money for uh, for people's running the Windows program, that seems to get updated automatically. Um, yeah, and that's what some people love about Windows, and some people don't love about Windows because it updates things automatically in the middle of them doing something else. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's another. Also, it doesn't like you know reboot here. So time to reboot. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, next question in the sequencer in the abbreviation list, they're listed alphabetically by the abbreviation. Is there any way for me to toggle that back and forth to ab abbreviate it by the the actual term. Oh, the, by, the, by the expansion. No. Because um. I, I have a lot of my own abbreviations and I can't remember if I was added one or, or, you know, I find I'm just typing a different abbreviation for that same thing. So I want to find it and put in my new abbreviation because that's what my fingers are automatically doing. And it'd be nice. It, I find it eventually, but it just takes longer. I was just... You know, if, if you could easily, it's not worth the effort if it's not easy, um, just mm -hmm. make it so you could. Um, right side or right side? 
sorted yeah. by either column. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll think about that. One other thing to, to uh, consider, especially with what I'll be um, uh, in, in the next version, will make it even easier to export the uh, abbreviations to Excel or another spreadsheet. And if you're really into abbreviations, that's something I'd, I'd really recommend. So you have like a backup copy in case you know you lose the uh, the Tamination's application or something. You don't all your work on the abbreviations doesn't go poof. And that's also, if you wanted to transfer it to another uh, another machine, that's why you do. And then in Excel, you can uh, arrange arrange them, sort them out. And that. That's a great idea. Uh, backups. I know that about everything else. I didn't think of Tamination's losing my backups. I know somebody watching me once liked the abbreviations I was using, and so I was able to copy it and just send him a message with all mine. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't think about I should back mine up. Now, here's a question I have about those, though. When I copy abbreviations, does it copy, does it completely redo all the abbreviations that are on there and just put the new set in, or does it um, append them? Oh, oh! If I mean, if you, if you pasted in some abbreviations, it will add them and to uh, append them to whatever you have. Great. If great. you want to replace them, then you would hit the clear button first and then the paste. Great. That's that's the way it should work. Thank you. Yes, I agree. <laughs> um, two more, Don. Then we got Klaus, and then Mickey. Okay, I got I've got two. Well, one's a quickie. I, while you were talking, I was trying sorts of different things. And I noticed um, Dixie Grand from a quarter tag doesn't work. I don't know if you care. Um, yeah, yeah, there there are some things where uh, Dixie Grand doesn't doesn't work. It only works for it with with a few formations. But my real request is, on the main Tamination screen, you've got three panels. Is there any way to resize those uh, while I'm working, once I've got the abbreviations and the settings and everything where I want them? And by the way, I don't have to go into settings. There are keyboard commands for all those things now. That's fantastic. Um, but is there any way to resize that right panel so that I can see my, my dance floor larger? Or is that something you well, can not, not now. I can, I, can, I can look into that and see how easy or difficult that would be that would be based on the UI that I'm programming to. Um, and let me end with the thing I started with. Thank you so much. Oh, great. And, and I've really enjoyed this presentation and learned some more tricks here. Sure. Great, thanks. Uh, Klaus with a question and then Mickey. Okay, no question, but uh, I would uh, personally thank Brett for um, doing the the short access it was me i asked for that and okay. i need it yeah. i need it next week thank you for <laughs> okay <laughs> perfect timing then. yep wonderful thank you i didn't really have my hand up but since i was um, asked to talk now uh, i just want to say thank you to brad for i think excellent job you're doing for the activity thank you great thank you and not argue with that. Once again, if you do have questions about Taminations, by all means, send them in. Uh, Brad, I do definitely hope to get you back here to expand a little bit on the use and the play and the actual physical where people can bring in the choreographic sequences they may be having problems with and you can help them oh, yeah. through that. A couple of people have asked on that and we are going to be talking about a couple of those later offline or we might even bring them in depending on if they want to do it in front of everybody. Um, but send your questions to Brad. And uh, if I can convince him to come back, which is usually sure. just, hey, Brad, you want to come and do a presentation yeah. is really all the convincing it takes. Uh, as per this session, and the last one, uh, just send in some questions that you may have, and uh, he'll get them answered for you. So let's open the floor up and uh, yes, Don. You're muted, Don. That's intentional, <laughs> but I keep forgetting I did it. Is there a, a those who can kind of thing, such, um, as, such as head square through, and rather than designating centers, I just say those who can? 
Um, yes, it's it's somewhat limited, though. I say you know, give it a try and see if it works for your cases. And uh, um, it, it depends how how easy. It depends on how easy or, or difficult it is if, uh, for contaminations to figure out who can and who cannot gotcha. do the call. Cool. Very good. Yeah, I've used it when it had weird formations. Those who can slide through and it works. Yeah. Generally, um, what I found with uh, on those, if you have something like heads touch a quarter, you can use something, those who can pass through, or if you have opposite gender, those who can slide through. When it's a very obvious, simple command, that'll work. I don't know about any of the abstracts. Another one that it was, this comes up an awful lot is on the diagonal, like uh, head boys on the diagonal pull by, um, you know, end two ladies from lines, just the very two end ladies on the diagonal chain. Um, right, I haven't yeah. figured out how to do those no. without using advanced calls. No, no, it doesn't do that. You know, those who can slide through and those who can pass through are, are very easy because um, th those who can are the dancers who are facing each other. You guys can ask these questions directly to Brad. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll still hang out for a little while. I was going to ask one, but I forgot that I didn't have myself unmuted again. <laughs> Just to comment on your your right hand and left hand stars thing. Um, when I teach new dancers, I leave those things out for a long time because that and circle left, I think of as sloppy calls. They don't say start here and they start there. Where do they end? It's a function of timing. Um, and timing, especially with new squares, is different from one square to the next, depending on when they get started moving. So, boy, I sympathize with you with trying to figure out how to do stars in that. Right, right. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to program the uh, dancers to be sloppy. <laughs> one, of the, one of the features that I really do like is the fact that you can make your comments in brackets or in parentheses at the end of each line. And, and, and as opposed to putting it on the line with the call or with before the comma, for instance, if I was going to do head square through make a right hand star heads star left halfway, I could do head square through put in comma right hand star head star left halfway end bracket and then the next line just go you know right and left through pass through trade by and then right in, in brackets equivalent so that when I copy and paste that I know that I've got an equivalent of the call that I want but when I write the sequence out I just have to be aware of the timing and I can do it did I, did I explain that clearly or not <laughs> uh, Brad is there any way of, of avoiding caller labs definition uh, in, <laughs> in relation to stars and say okay for terminations we're going to make it that you turn the star a half and people finish facing. If you want them to face elsewhere, you have to add an additional command on the end of the star. So you would say, right. yeah, head, yeah, yeah. Yeah, head star left, or, uh, heads, uh, if you were going to do star the route, for instance, yeah, work that through, you know, how would you do it? You know, head yeah, star, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, yeah. Yeah, that's sort of what I'm leaning at because usually the next call will be, uh, you know, sort of when you have the the uh, the like heads come in and make a star, then the next <laughs> call will be after you know after they finish turning so much, then they would face the sites, and then you do the next call with the sites. Yeah, so a good example would be head star three quarters. Mm -hmm. Now face the sides. Yeah, so. Um, so certainly you wanted to do it with the flow, but you you want to separate the two commands. You want them to go three quarters first, then you want them to finish facing the sides. Mm -hmm. right. issue I would, I would yeah. see with that is because in, in the programming issue, if you did head square through four, make a right hand star, and then head star left, you've got the outsides turning to face back in, you've got the centers coming where they would be back to back, 
with, or with their backs facing the outside couple. But if you did heads make a right hand star one time around and your home sides or heads promenade half make a right hand star halfway and your home sides make a right hand star one full turn your home that ending position is not having them back to back it's not having it's having one couple back to back or one couple with their back or sometimes they end up as facing couples and getting that kind of definition for the variety would have to be programmed for each sequential use of it it's a very very it's like right arm turn you need that directional prompt, but how do you program a directional prompt when you don't know what's going to exist? You, yeah. you have, Brad, you have already programmed it in the cross chain through on C1, where you have the set is doing a star the halfway and then face the outside too. Right, well, well then on, 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 the, uh, on those, the uh, ending position is, is well defined. It's uh, you know what's going to happen next. Like Mel was saying, for stars in general, it's not, there's no consistent rule as to how you end up, especially if you're, if, if all the dancers, you're making two stars and you're turning them around and then the centers do something else and the ends are, you know, just left out in no man's land and you don't know if they should be facing out or facing in or facing whichever, which way are they going to promenade or are they going to do something with centers? Absolutely. I've got yeah. Guga and then Guido. I think there is some kind of a general, I mean, a star should finish exactly on the same spot as where a circle would finish, circle four. Then which direction you would be, that's another problem. Yeah. Head, uh, it, head square it, through it, four, it, right hand star, you should. It, it, it's a lot easier if you look at something that programs before rather than programs after. Alaman left is a good example where you can program in anywhere you can make that 90 degree turn to find a defined person within that quadrant that you end up face to face. If you can make that 90, a star is you, you've got to do that before, but program an unknown after. And that doesn't always work because that means you've got to reprogram every movement that you can follow a star with. At least that's how I understand it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pamination's does pretty good on Alman Left because the way the program works, you type Alman Left in it, and the program looks at each dancer and says, "Where's my corner? Is my corner anywhere nearby? And can I turn to face that corner? Oh, there it is, uh, Alman Left." And if it can't, then it just says, "Oh, we're not resolved. Can't Alman Left?" Yes, but uh, in the recent uh, interpretation of the uh, stars, if I do head square through four and make a right hand star. It it doesn't end where it should be. It ends with one and an eighth star. Yeah, whatever, yeah. Uh, so, but, and then, then of course, but obviously you should be able to figure out where, where to turn the dancers for the next call, which you have to program in before you can say it. Uh, I understand it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> We don't. But I had another question. You, oh, have a, you have a wonderful section also about to embed the, the terminations on your own websites if you want to. Is there a way to just embed the uh, animation part if you have a, done a nice sequence which you want to show people? Yes, that's the main idea. But when you do the embed, it doesn't embed the, the, the whole three panels. It just embeds the, the animation part. I've missed that one. If you can embed the animation, can you do it as, uh, put it as a pop out as well? I was just thinking back to Don's question. If he's teaching and talking, having that center screen as a pop out. I would love that. Um, well, well, if you know web programming, it's it's, it's just a, a it's, it's programmed as an iframe. So anything you could do with an iframe, you could do uh, embedding. Guido. Oh, I have a very mundane question. Is, Brad, do you have a reason for coloring the couples in this way you did? Because the question, the, the reasoning is, when I started to color my my couples in the 90s, I took them in alphabetical order. Blue for one, 
two for green, three for red, and four for yellow, because I never forget the alphabet. Um, well, I, the, the colors that I use are, are I, I think, are the most common colors that are used for checkers that are, uh, that colors used before we had computers. Yeah, well, so, uh, the thing is, uh, I haven't found a system yet. And uh, when I was sitting in a train coloring my, my, my drawings, when I commuted, uh, I thought the next day, which colors did I take? Then I started to say, blue is one, green is two, three is red, four is yellow, and that's the alphabetical, alphabetical order. It's just, a, it's just a mundane question, but not... In Sweden, in English, I yes. I set mine up with that white is one, because that's the way my checkers are. It's just easier, and I think most people set them up to match their checkers. Well, but it's it's difficult to draw in white. <laughs> I set them up in political order. The blues are right to the left, to the reds. <laughs> another, that's another one. Right? <laughs> that, that means you won't have very many Italian callers. <laughs> well, Martin, not, you had a comment. American, at least. I have a workaround for the for the question done. Uh, had I can I can have my my pop up on my screen. Can you see it? And if that's too that's small, nice. I can make it big. I can show it to my dancers. And I can turn it off again. So I thank Brad very much for this terminations program. And if you use it with the OBS program, uh, you can do so many things with it. Hmm. The animation show on that. Yes. How do you do that, Martin? Well, I have a, there's a program called OBS. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know what the OBS stands for, except the S is for studio. Uh, that's a freeware or, or it's, uh, okay. And it, you, you set up a camera. So the screen you see right now is, is a virtual camera. And what you can see on that picture, I can, I can have I have uh, terminations open and I have a recorder uh, recording that part of, of uh, the terminations uh, desktop. And I'm assuming that's Windows because most things are. That's oh. Windows, but I'm I'm I know that OBS is for Mac as well. Yeah, yeah have Windows, to check. Mac, Linux. I just brought it. Yeah, OBS Studio. Yeah, yeah. So you can have I, the I put, the. I put the link in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it is it is geared for Mac, uh, but it only starts at I think version ten. Um, so if you got if you've got an earlier version of Mac, if the operating uh, system is before ten, it, 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 I don't think it'll work. Yeah, I'm much newer than that. I'm nowhere near the new stuff for technical reasons, but yeah, that I'm. Uh, Thank you, Martin. I will be investigating that. Right. Uh, uh, OS OS ten, right? That's like two thousand two or something. So yeah. yeah. Some people like me, they don't upgrade their operating systems until they're actually in a fit of desperation. <laughs> Does that mean that this OBS program is only working on on a Mac device? No, no, it, no. it works on it, it, Windows it works as well. Across. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a programmer, but I believe it works right across the systems, or if you're a Linux programmer, or a, even a, a, a C programmer, it, it should work. But it's designed for Windows, Mac, Linux, and I think there's one more that it'll work on. But it, it's, um, it's, open, it's open software, which means it is subject to uh, commercial cookies and things like that, but apparently it works pretty good. Okay. I've got a question, okay. Martin. I missed the first part of it. So, what do you use it? Why well, I, I teach online, so I, I I call and and then the dancers have a question, and I can, if I have it, uh, if I call a module that I know, I can let it run here, and they can see it. Or I want to talk it through, and other than switching screens, I can enlarge it. They can look at it, and I can make it small again or I can just turn it off and continue calling. Mm -hmm. That's it's, what I use it for. It's more, it's more sophisticated screen sharing, basically. Mm. Well, or your studio. 
Yeah, it's for like live streaming and stuff. I use it. Yeah. I'm on Windows. Uh, that's how I do the different the different sceneries and changing the different screens, putting the hands up and stuff. It does work on Windows. It works on Mac. Uh, and it is free. And I have never seen an advertisement in it. When you when you use it, does what is Zoom, when you're recording a Zoom session and using that? Does it show up also? I think we're going to find out on this one because he used it in this one. <laughs> so at the end of this session, we'll see if it comes up, Mark. You mean I got to go back and watch this again? Yeah, I know it sucks. <laughs> it I got kind of lost on that question. Saying if you're using it within Zoom on a Zoom recording, does it show up on the Zoom recording because it's a software in a software? Because I am oh, using Zoom. I am using Zoom, but OBS Studio lets you put all of your audio, your video. I can do the scene changes, the hands, all that stuff. And it sends it to you in Zoom. You pick your OBS Studio camera. So Zoom is putting out everything that OBS Studio does. It's like OBS uh, replaces your camera, basically, if you want yes. to think of it that way. Yes. And it lets you and it lets you do more sophisticated things with putting up multiple images and you know fade effects and you can do audio and stuff. I just audio. Look. I've I only recently at... graduated from a grease pencil and a, and a clear sheet of plastic, so I think I'll just stick with what I got now. Well, I just I found out about this thing just now, and I can't wait to download it. <laughs> it's also available on the App Store. I just checked, and they and on Macs. Yep. Okay. Have I we got there's, uh, there's any questions? More questions for contaminations, and uh, I did have one. Which, if um, Steve, did you want to look at that after, or did you want to ask Brad to go over that? It's up to you. Or has Steve, has Steve left? Yeah. That looks like Steve has left us. All right, I'll, I'll be in contact with him. Okay. His was about the separate round when he couldn't get it working on, on his system. And I think that might be because he has a downloaded version that maybe hasn't been updated or something along that line. Hmm. Yeah, it hasn't, hasn't changed for a while. You, yeah, you know, no, I, I just... don't know because I, I sent him what we had done, I typed it out and I checked double site. He says, but it, it, it wasn't working on his. And that was heads pass through, separate around one to a line. So I don't know what the, what the issue was. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's 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 tough to get it exactly right. It's a little picky on the exact word. So it's yeah. easy, it's easy to get it wrong. I remember that conversation on Facebook. Uh, everybody kind of switched the original question. The original question was from a static square, heads separate go around and everybody that was answering was replying with heads pass through separate oh. which you can pass through and separate but going from a static square you can't get them to separate right from a static square go around to come into the middle oh. no not not with one command i, th I, th I think you could uh, uh check real real quickly here and while i got a chance here i want to let yeah. you know brad my That's list my my uh, abbreviations list went from 210 at the beginning of this meeting. It's up to 242 abbreviations now, thanks to well, this meeting. It worked for me, Mark. Yeah, you could do head separate from a static square. You could do head separate as just a, a command on its own, you know, call on, call on its own, and that gives you the heads. The, the sides will step in and their heads will. Uh, yeah, what uh, what I see. Sorry, Brad, I cut you off there. Oh, okay, and, and then after after that, you could. Um, I don't think I don't think around one to a line. Yeah, I, I just copied that out of Taminations. They wanted oh. to go around two into the middle. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. Well, I don't know if I'll do that. That was the original question on Facebook. Yeah, no, it doesn't like that so much. Mm 
نگاه کنه If we're doing bug reports, I, I think the other day I tried to get it to do box and out from waves and it didn't do it. Oh, okay, well, we'll check that. Yeah. Mm, well, it works for me. I had, so it, uh, it, it might have been, it might have been a problem some time ago, but it's, uh, it's working now. I had a I had a quarter tag with uh, you know the sides facing each other uh, the, you know the ends facing each other. Uh, oh, okay. And, and it did the ends, but it didn't. It seemed like it didn't do the centers. Oh yeah, it didn't do it. Yeah, it didn't do it correctly. Yeah. Mm. Okay, now look at that. Thank you. And I do like the way you changed the all four ladies uh, lead flutter wheel, because that's right. Uh, that is a right. lot more like that is a lot more like I call it when I'm teaching my handy capables. Oh, good. Right, right. That, I, I that terminology that. actually matches what I do better, so I, I like that change. Good, good. For for those who haven't heard, it's it's um, uh, originally. Under under the call flutter wheel, I had it listed for all four ladies. It's like uh, it was um, what I call it, like all eight flutter wheel or something like that, which is really how you would call it at at the advanced level. But at then, uh, so he changed it to match what the color lab definition has, uh, which is like all all four women lead flutter wheel or all four men lead reverse flutter wheel. Which is how you would call it at that level. And all four bells flutter wheel. All four bells flutter wheel. Yeah, yeah. It's a, especially if, if you've done, if you mix them up and uh, have have all the boys at the head position, all the girls at the at the side position. Yeah, then you can do something like that. There's a couple of comments and side conversations that are coming in. Some of them are in open chat, others are not. Um, Taminations does do a lot of substitution calls. Uh, the examples that a couple are in the chat, others were on the diagonal. You can always say boys cross or girls cross if you want to do that kind of stuff. Um, but that's what they are. They are substitutions and newer callers that don't dance advanced challenge don't have that repertoire in their memories. So th this is one of the things that, that goes through. And I strongly encourage if, if there are things like that, rather than look for an advanced or a challenge substitution to do the same effect, or even a separate contact Brad and, and mm -hmm. say, look, how do I do this? Eventually, I, I, I know Brad, he'll come up with an answer eventually. <laughs> because Things like that, from what I've been told about you, Brad, they, they niggle yeah. away at you until it, it's like a challenge. Right, it's exactly. like I had to finish that jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> um, there was one other thing. Oh, uh, yeah. I was just wondering if you could look at, that was one of the things that, um, I can't remember, well, I think it might have been Chris, but if you did a heads past the ocean, sides quarter in. Mm -hmm. Now, when you call a box the nat from here, the box the nat from a standard wave, if I call the center's box the nat, they do it properly and end up as facing. But if I call box the nat from the quarter tag, they switch from a right hand to a left hand wave. Right, right. That's that's what we were just talking about. I, I, I made a note to uh, that this oh, okay. needs to be fixed. Brad, you know, you have this uh, awesome uh, reputation for uh, ad addressing all the uh, bug reports and everything so quickly. And uh, it reminds me of, uh, of an old uh, Ziggy cartoon where he said, uh, I said something like, uh, do a little bit more each day, and then people will expect that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, what, what I say is, is that I've got the perfect hobby. It's 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 fun for me to do, and it will never be finished. Oh, 
I, I, the reason the reason I was asking it is because um, if you do a heads past the ocean centers box, and that it recognizes that quarter tag formation. It's just when you start if you modify the outsides, it no longer recognizes that uh, quarter tag formation, even though it's a modified quarter tag. It, it no longer recognizes that center wave as a wave. Yeah, I have I no idea. I have no idea. No idea why. I don't know. I'll have to look at it. I don't know what the, what the issue is. I have to admit that I don't really uh, use the sequencer feature or anything much, but the uh, but the taminations as far as a, a resource uh, for dancers, this is just the best thing since sliced bread. It's just mm -hmm. unbelievably wonderful. Great, thanks. And that was that was my real motivation when I started uh, the program many years ago. This long before the sequencer, that was my main motivation. Is that there there were some programs, there were other programs for the uh, for colors, but there wasn't anything to help the dancers learn learn to square dance. So uh, that's way back when, before we had apps and iPhones, we uh, just I just or start programming the website and just started doing definitions of animations. It's, it is a fantastic program. It's a fantastic teaching tool. And um, in a lot of cases, it's become a tool of dependence for callers, which I know you never intended it as such, mm -hmm. but I'd be lying if I said a lot of callers don't write their uh, choreography in any other way but on taminations including the timing including everything else to see if it works it has that power and and the more it develops the better it, it gets i mean it's, it, there's never a step backwards that i've seen and i've been familiar with it for a fair while so thank you very much it's a Good. great resource great thanks have we got thank any more questions for brad no, just thank you, Brad, and I'll get all my dancers to download Terminations okay. as well. So thank you. Okay. So did I, but I had to forbid one dancer to look into the Terminations because mm -hmm. he was so focused on looking on top from the bird's view on what the dancer's doing and trying um, to uh, compare that and, and, and compromise that with the view he had when standing in, in the square. And he was just confused and absolutely and I said him, do not look at terminations until next week and just mm -hmm. try the calls. And after you've done them and you know what it looks and feels like, um, then have a look for clarification or for further knowledge. And it was funny. He didn't uh, first know what I was talking about, but then he finally, not in the first week, but after the second and third week, he stopped looking at terminations and pre-looking what we were learning and then it went better. And then he was one of my finest dancers now, but uh, we laugh now, but he said, how did you know? <laughs> right, right. It's a, it's a great tool, but it's no substitute for dancing. Right. Dancers standing with the phone in, while they're dancing, <laughs> trying to see what I was calling. Yeah. Want to have real fun? put up something completely different than what you're going to call and let them figure it out. <laughs> so they find out who's reading the screen and who's not. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we seem to have come to a lull in the conversation. Brad, once again, thank you okay. ever so much. And I hope to have you back in a few months or a couple months sure. anyway. Sure. And, uh, look at this as the, the next step and where we go from there. And as I said, if you have any questions or anything, you can send them to Brad, or if you want to have it when we announce this, if you have any questions to build up, I'll get those sent to Brad before the next session. So thank you very much again, wonderful okay. performance, and you are always, always, always welcome. Okay, thank you, Mel. Thanks everybody. Bye now. Thank you, Brad. So the floor is open, ladies and gentlemen, for anything you want. If you want to stick around, if not, we can call it a day. Uh, once again, I want to say thank you to my co-host, Mark Hart, who does a lot of time and research 
and a lot of energy and work in the background, making sure that all these things are up and running. Um, we've been going now for about three years. We've got something like 85 sessions on the web. I also want to thank Don. Don has come in today. I don't know if Don is still here. Don's, uh, I think he's got 70 different sessions recorded on the web, the GSI's college schools. Mark collates them all, puts them on the OC Callers website, along with all the material that goes with them. And it is a fantastic resource. It's a fantastic opportunity to go back and look at single topics in depth, as opposed to being fed with a fire hose and, and digest at your own pace. So thank you again, Mark, for everything that you do behind the scenes. Couldn't make it happen without you. Uh, next week, uh, what have we got coming up next? Hang on a sec. I just got, oh, wait. Uh, not you guys, I'm talking my computer here. Uh, where are we here? Yeah, so next week we've got Klaus is coming up and Klaus is going to, uh, Klaus Vernaki from Germany. And he's going to be taking a different look at site calling per se. It, it's a lot of what we know, but looking at it from a slightly different perspective, uh, Klaus being self-taught, has gone through and he's developed not necessarily a unique system, but unique to the perception of how you can approach site calling. And it has a lot of little easier things that could bring things into perspective for new callers. So tune in next week. And then the week after that, we've got Corbin Geis, who is going to be joining us. Uh, and Corbin's going to be talking about a lot of the things that have happened with him, but in particular uh, on the dance floor calling expecting the unexpected and how to deal with it. And that could be anything from choreography to whatever. So both of those I expect to be very, very good sessions. So uh, tune in then. Mm -hmm. Mel? Yes? I sent you an email with a new song, so. Uh, oh, got it, yeah, okay. And it's a brand new recording. It's not one of the old ones. I will definitely have a go and have a look at it. All right. Do you want a full mix or you want that as per the programs we're working on now? The programs. I don't know. I I I am just happy with doing the uh, a uh, what do you call it <laughs> SSD. Figure. Okay. Not a worry. Uh, the the uh, I, I we ran in we're running into a problem with all the different variations and the different levels. Uh, it makes for a big download, and those it, it overloads the system. Okay. I've got there, there's been a lot of positive and negative comments on that. The negative has always been it's a big download. Yeah. Um, the positive has been there. There's a lot of groups that don't have a caller or groups that get together and dance that are buying these, and I hope they are buying them and not just borrowing them off somebody that has like bought them. They are, <laughs> and uh, they they like them because they can use the different levels and the different choreography uh, with music that they're familiar with. So you can use the same piece of music at basic, mainstream, plus a one SSD, mm -hmm. whatever that you happen to be dancing. It gives a wider repertoire, but um, for those of you that don't know it, Bob is doing a lot of these um, recordings, restoring a lot of the older recordings that have been lost in the systems and, and producing new ones. Uh, and they're directed not only to the square dance community in general, but to the SSD program to add on to the flexibility for callers that are supporting and, and teaching the SSD program. So it's a valuable resource. If you get a chance, have a look at Riverboat Records and you will see exactly what is out there. A lot of really good material. Yeah, might as well go ahead and record the different levels. I don't know what I'll put out, but... <laughs> I'd talk to you. Or if we I'd... find a way to work around it. You're not a worry. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's really about it. We seem to have come to a lull. Uh, if nobody has anything you want to look at, I want to say thank I, you very much for actually, coming in. And I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Yolanda. I was going to ask my, uh, Mickey a question once more people leave. <laughs> oh, don't be shy. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. 
<laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Never have you, you, you going to ask him for a date? No, 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 no. It's about checkers. It's about you want checkers. To go into I, workout I, room? Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> we just turned the recording off. Oh, Mickey, did you try that bucket of worms routine? Not yet. I've been not to, not yet, but I will. But I will. Definitely. <laughs> I did it at A2 dance the other night, and two squares nailed it, and one square was that didn't get it. And you should have heard the two squares when they got it and they nailed it at the end, you know, yelling out, you know, they 